Hey guys, Resin Rambles 89 back again today with another reaction video. This time I'll be reacting to Stone Cold and Jim Cornette talking about Ole Anderson. Now, of course, the sad news broke today that he's passed away. Rest in peace and my sympathies to him and his family and friends. I know he had the reputation of being a grumpy SOB, but still it's sad news in a way. So yeah, I just thought I'd react to this and without wasting any more time, let's get started. You brought up Ole Anderson's name a while ago. <clears throat> Ole was a rough, gruff, tough son of a bitch. And when I passed through WCW, I got along just great with him. I really enjoyed uh, Ole. <clears throat> and of course, watching him in a tag match, I didn't get a, uh, a chance to catch a whole lot of Gene and Ole, but I caught, I caught a whole lot of Ole and Arn, one Hell of my yeah. favorite tag teams of all time. What was your relationship, what was your relationship like with Ole Anderson? Well, you know, Ole, not only was he a gruff son of a bitch and, and wrestling's original grumpy old man, but all, he yeah. was incredibly intelligent, right? Uh, incredibly hmm. well-spoken. Uh, he was dedicated to the wrestling business and he was very straight laced with it. And as a matter of fact, my favorite Ole Anderson, one of the nicest things that anybody ever said to me, Ole said, you know, Cornette one time, I said, I, I used to think you were a dumb fuck, but so many other dumb fucks have come along that that are worse than you that you've moved up the ladder without doing anything <laughs> um Ole and i got off on a rocky start because dundee had done I a deal that. at in that georgia territory in the summer of 83 where my rich mother had sent my my poodle fifi down because <laughs> i'd never had you know fifi had never had a birthday without me being along you know with her and we had a birthday party for fifi and this actually this videotape, I, I've got a shameless plug at jimcornette.com. If you go and you look up the rook, my rookie year video, shameless this plug, video right. is available. <laughs> like seven people saw this fucking show. <laughs> but I've preserved it. We had a birthday party with all my birthday. heels wearing the hats and blowing the noisemakers. We had a cake. And, of course, the, the fantastic ones, Bobby Fulton and Terry Taylor, came out and put my face in the cake. And Ole came from the real straight-laced, you know, the Carolinas, where there wasn't a lot of comedy and there wasn't a lot of bullshit shit and wrestling and they didn't yeah. do a lot of outrageous things and you know he remembered the nick Goulas days from tennessee where nick was a notoriously bad payoff man and and they did a lot of hoo-ha he didn't understand the tennessee wrestling philosophy and we're in chattanooga after all so oh, it's, it's tennessee so first time i met Ole, <laughs> and i'm a young kid but i was still a smart ass and i said Ole, it's nice to meet you and i shook his hand and he said yeah you had the the birthday party for the dog on my television. I said, yeah, I saved you a piece of cake. He said, really? I said, yeah, it's in my ear. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, Ole and I had a star-crossed relationship until finally he got a begrudging respect, I think, for me because he enjoyed zingers. He liked verbally jousting right. with people. And if you that. could stand up and trade with him verbally, he got a little bit of respect for you. So one time after the Great American Bash of 86, we're working for Crockett and we're in the locker room in Huntington, West Virginia. And Ole, you know, had gotten his check and I, we, we'd all gotten our checks for the bash. And um, I think his check for the 14 bashes was like $17,500 and mine was like 22000 because we were Whoa. figured in a little bit, right. you know, stronger with the midnight and the rock and roll and the road wars and et cetera. And he said, he said, you know, God damn, it's a sorry state of affairs. When I've spent all my life trying to uphold the honor of wrestling and working all my life and blah, blah, blah. for And we'd worked against Baby Doll. That was the thing. Six man's me against Baby Doll. And it says a sorry state of affairs when a, a bitch and a fat manager make more money than I do. And I said, well, to be honest with you, Ole, I said, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you right here and right now for paving the way in the wrestling business so that I could come in and make more money than you did. <laughs> you well, know, God damn it. The thing about Ole was he was one of the best customers I've ever talked to. He just uses the same standard words that we all use, but for some reason, coming out of his mouth, it's pure platinum. Well, it was like the, you know, the father on the Christmas story. He worked in profanity the way other people work in oils. <laughs> um, and, and, and that's the thing is, is um, you know, only uh, despite the profanity, he, he was, like I said, an incredibly intelligent guy. And Real smart. He, he could make his point, but he, he punctuated the points in profanity to be alliterative so yeah, that, uh, so that the, right the guys would, would listen to it at the same time. He was making a very intelligent point, but he was making sure that they listened to it. 
And uh, you know that was and and plus one of the great promo men of all time. Yep. Still to this day, the the promo that he did on Atlanta TV on TBS after he turned on Dusty Rhodes in the cage in the Omni, which I was at that match, and there were literally fans trying to climb the cage to get into it to get it at the Andersons. Um, you know that was one of the great promos that I used to give the guys in Ohio Valley Wrestling tapes of to say. If you want to draw money verbally in a wrestling business, this is how. Right. Nice. And uh, so Oli, Oli and Gene, they were they were a no flash tag team, but they drew money in in Georgia and the Carolinas for years. And people always say, well, why didn't the Anderson brothers go anywhere else? If they were so good. And it was much the same as Lawler in Memphis, where they would have been stupid to go anywhere else. They were making so much money, and they were on top and drawing such big houses in the, the Carolinas and Virginia and Georgia that they didn't need to go anywhere else for, for years, right. years at a time. Exactly. Yeah, that was really, hey, you really brought interesting. Up I Anderson's enjoyed name a while lot ago. hearing the bits that Stone Cold was throwing in. And, of course, what Cornette was saying. Cornette had some great lines. The stuff, like the relationship he had, if you could call it that with Anderson, then, the, well, Anderson's the gruff old man of wrestling, as I said, always bitter and angry. At if even if he wasn't, that's how he came across. But getting a grudge and respect for Cornette because he could joust with him verbally—that's pretty good stuff. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. And again, Anderson passed away, and R.I.P. So I just thought I'd throw up this reaction video because Cornette can talk with the best of them and of course Stone Cold can too. So I thought you guys would be interested like I was. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I upload or at least try to upload every single day. This is Wrestling Rambles 89 signing off.